Hi everyone, I'm very glad to see you on this channel and today we're gonna start our first information video of life in Spain. Woohoo! I'm so excited! Um, so today I'm gonna talk to you about the schools here in Spain, the education here in Spain. I suppose that some of you might wonder uh, how's the education in Spain, what kind of schools do we have, are they private or public? Is it hard to get to the public ones or the private ones? What's the price? Do you need to pay anything? Um, all this huge ball of information and questions unanswered. Uh, probably you might have any of them or you want to move to Spain and you don't know how to do it, what to do, how to start searching for a school for your children. So today we're going to start with the first part of these uh, two part videos. Uh, which is going to be public schools. Yes, here in Spain we have um, a lot of public schools. We have different types of education, which can be either a public one, private one, or um, semi-private one. Public schools are the ones where you don't have to pay anything. These are just normal schools that you can find anywhere in the city, in the small town, um, in the village even. Um, and in these schools you only pay a small, small fee in case your child will stay for lunch at school. And of course, if you want some extra activities, you'll have to pay some small amount as well, but it's not going to be a lot. And then you have private schools. Private schools are very popular here in Spain. You'll know in the second video why it's like this. But I'm just going to say that private schools are as normal for us as uh, as public schools um, and there you have to pay for the education every month you get to pay as well the um, booking of the place the like the reservation of the place for your child for the next year you get to pay for all the school material as well and you need to pay for the lunch as well and extra activities if you want any for your child uh, and there you have to wear a uniform versus the public school where you don't have to wear a uniform. You just can wear anything that you want. Suitable for school, but anything that you want. <laughs> and then we have um, semi-private schools. These schools are uh, partially paid by the government and the Catholic Church. And then the other part, the small part of it, Parents have to pay for it, but it's only a small amount. It's about um, 100 something euros for a month for the child. You also get to, to wear a uniform and you need to pay some small percentage of the price for the lunch of your child as well. Um, today we're going to talk about the public schools only. I don't want this video to be too long. Um, so public schools are... Um, a normal way of education here in Spain. However, they have some um, negative sides. Let's start with these first. Um, negative sides of public schools. Um, they don't really teach um, foreign languages that well as, as well as private schools or semi-private schools. Um, they have some teachers that have basic level of knowledge of English, let's say, um, like me, like medium level of, of knowledge and they are not native speaking teachers and they teach children, they teach with a strong accent, um, they teach with mistakes as well. So um, children that finish public schools, they don't really have very good knowledge of foreign languages as they should have nowadays because you know that now languages are the most important thing because if you know any foreign language, the window to the world is open. Um, here in Spain, there was a problem since long, long, long time ago that um, people that have now uh, like 30, they're in their late 30s, they don't really know English very well. They know some basic words only um, just because at school they didn't learn English. That's, that's very sad, isn't it? Um, as well as uh, public education, their um, system of education is not that good, let's say. Um, they don't have any um, new IT systems to support the 
the, the science projects, um, some presentations, visual um, comprehension of the world. They don't have the basic things that the private schools have because private schools, of course, they have more money. That's, that's not a secret, you know, but um, I always thought that government schools, like public schools, were, um, had very good financial support from the government. Thus, they should have the latest things, latest computers, uh, video screens, uh, laptops, iPads, notebooks, anything. But that's not true. Um, here in Spain, public schools don't really have good computers. They're very old. Uh, the systems inside the computers are very old as well. Um, children don't learn with iPads, they don't learn with, with uh, videos, with presentations, no. They only have very old computers that are like this, of, like this, this white, um, and they're not really good. Um, as well as they are learning unnecessary things in public schools, um, unnecessary dialects, which is the main problem with the public schools in some areas here in Spain. I suppose you know that in Spain, depending on which area you want to go to, you're going to find some dialects that are not 100% Spanish, Spanish language. Um, for example, here in Valencian community, you're going to find Valenciano, which is Valencian dialect, which is given since a few years from now in all public schools. So Children learn in Valenciano, not in Spanish, uh, which is quite hard because if your children are not Spanish, like mine, my, my daughter is half, well, she's half Russian, she's half Spanish. But in any case, she talks more in Russian than in Spanish. So for her, if she would have been in a public school, it would have been a lot more difficult because she would have to learn another language dialect. Mm. The same happens in Catalonia, which is Barcelona, Girona, that north area. Uh, they learn in Catalan, that's another dialect, um, which is also hard because a lot of families there are just normal Spanish speaking, but they are forced to um, study in the dialect because they live in that area. The same happens to the north part of Spain, which is um, País Vasco, for example, Navarra, um, there in the area, Pamplona, they have uh, another dialect that children are forced to study on, which is quite hard. In Madrid, in south part of Spain, Andalusia, Sevilla, Malaga, uh, they don't have that kind of problem. They study the normal Spanish. Uh, but if you decide to go to one of these regions that I just mentioned, uh, be prepared that in a public school, you'll have to, your child and you, because you'll have to help your child with all this, you'll have to study the dialect. Um, that is why a lot of parents, a lot of people are just bringing their children from public schools to private ones, the one who can afford it, um, just because in private schools they study in normal Spanish. That's the main negative side of the public schools, as well as um, all the like open air areas, you know, the, the patios, the parks, the playgrounds, uh, sports areas, um, public schools don't really have those. They have a huge open area, normally, not all of them, but normally here in our area where we live in Valencian community, they have a huge open area, which is for everything. It's a multi-purpose area where you can play basketball, volleyball, football, you can just run, you can do some sports, you can do stretching, uh, you can play anything that you want. And there's like a small play playground with a park to play, like a children's playground. That's it. That's what the public schools have, which is not a lot because um, here parents can give can um, give their children to the public like education to the school from three years old onwards. So such small children, they need something more than just open air, nothing, having ground, multi-purpose ground that doesn't really have anything on it. So it's just not enough. The education, the, um, the dialect, the, uh, the how teachers teach, how they treat children, uh, they don't like foreigners in, in, in many places, not all the schools, but I know here in this area, one school 
which doesn't really like foreign children they um, ask you not really politely the child to speak in in Spanish or in Valencian dialect and if he cannot do that they just recommend you to change to a private school it is what it is there is no discrimination in public schools that's true there is nothing like that because um, especially in the touristic areas like Valencian community Catalonia south south part of Spain it's quite natural that there is a lot more um, foreign um, children at school as than, than Spanish ones so it's quite natural here it's fine we don't have any racial discrimination um, national like nations discrimination nothing like that uh, which is a good thing but teachers just uh, ask and uh, wait for the same level of knowledge of language knowledge from these children as from the Spanish ones you just have to be prepared for that um, public schools um, they some of the public schools as well they have very short schedule of work usually they are open and they give classes to the children from nine till two um, and then that's it if you uh, until some certain age of course then later on they start until three thirty or five o'clock that depends on the age that your child is in uh, the age group but in private schools it's a lot different it's more convenient and in the next video i'm going to explain you why it's like this so um public schools the best thing is that you don't pay anything and your child still gets an education um it's not a bad education public schools are not bad it's just for some families and mine as well i feel that it's not enough that um uh, external spaces, the IT levels, the level of foreign languages, it's just not enough for what we want for our child. Um, but it's not a bad school, public schools are not bad, a lot of children study there, then they go to universities, so it's not a bad, um, let's say, option. It's just some families want different things and um, I didn't have all this that my daughter has in a private school now. I didn't have all that. I studied in a normal public school in my con back in my country. But now when I see what the possibilities are, um, I just couldn't imagine her to study in a public school at the moment. Uh, maybe things will change, but while she's small, I prefer her to go to the private school. Um, the best thing is that you don't pay anything. Uh, that it's quite close to your home normally um, however you cannot choose the exact school for your child um, you get to send the documents during springtime and then um, the government the local government ministry will decide to which school you will go you can put a preference you can select up till like let's say five schools and then you can put on the first number the one that you would definitely want to go to and then to the one less 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 and less desirable school um, and then they will decide to which one you will go if they have place for you on the first one and you live near the first one you'll get that one if not they will assign you the second one if they don't have places there either then you'll go to the third one so you will never know up until a few weeks before you start school where your child will go. Um, if it's a new start for you, if you already are inside the school, then that's not a problem for you. You don't have to send any documents. That's just for the people who are starting that school on this year. Um, so yeah, you never know where you will end up basically, which is not the same with the private schools. Private schools, you just choose which one you want, you go, you check it you have an interview and then if they decide and you decide you want to go for it then you just pay for it and that's it that's going to be your school but public ones no you don't get to decide of course you have some benefits if you uh, work near the public school if you live near it if everything is right near that school so it's quite probable that you have more points for it and then you'll get into that one but it's not necessarily the case and it's not always the case um, so yeah that's what it is about the public schools it's a good option it's not a bad education it's regulated by uh, Spanish government it's going with all the standards it's just that the level of a foreign language and the 
all the areas of a school it just seems to be um, not really enough for today's children and for what they will be in the future they need slightly more now to be able to adapt to the future and the work future as well so yeah that's what about uh, the public schools every public school is different in in other areas it's different as well some public schools have more some have less it just depends on the area a lot but um, if you don't want to just first of all check the area where you want to go and check if it has any dialect if it does have one be prepared your child will have to uh, study it but the younger the child is the easier it will get for him and the faster he'll learn that's not a bad thing as well uh, and then uh, you won't have to pay anything you'll be right probably you'll be right next to your home or your workplace so it's not a bad thing as well you don't have to use a car to pick them up um, and yeah, your child will get integrated in the uh, in the normal public school. It's not a bad thing. Um, I know a lot of foreign children that could have easily uh, gone to the private school and get a private education, but they decided to go to a public one because why not? If you search for a good public school with anything that you think uh, is suitable and necessary for your child in it, then that's no problem, you can easily go to a private one. Uh, yeah, so that was all the information about the public schools. If you have any more questions, uh, just let me know. I've already mentioned some part about the documents, uh, that you have to give a lot of documents of the springtime. Um, around March, there'll be some news in the local, uh, local ministry house. Um, local government house where you can go and they're gonna present all the schools what every school has and then you can choose already when you fill in all the papers which one you want to go to or your child <laughs> wants to go to and then you send the documents um, around April beginning of May and that's it then you wait first list will be published at the end of um, June beginning of July and then um, if there are some places left in the other school you have some time during July and beginning of August to send another part of the document where you say you want to change to that school because you've seen there are some space left and then at the end of August there's a final list of all the schools and all the children which go to which school that's how it works here in Spain. Before you go to a public school, you always have to go to the medical center to get some documents that your child is healthy and if, if he or she has any health problems, if they need some special attention, um, if, all the, um, if all the vaccines have been given to them according to their age, all that you have to get done before they start going to school, but everything else, it's very, very easy. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to send me a comment, uh, put a like and subscribe if you like this video, if you find it useful. And um, don't forget to comment me, remind that I'm not native English speaking. I learn English for now, so I'm sorry if I had any mistakes uh, during this video, but I'm learning, so please don't be harsh on me. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video, part two, private schools. See you guys, bye.